Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze and Blaze Stewart, architect at Winelect. Today we're going to be looking at topics and cues for Azure Service Bus. Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at Azure Service Bus and looking at topics and queues specifically. We're going to be looking at it from the application perspective, but this thing will integrate with a number of other things on Azure. We're primarily going to be looking at creating topics and queues today and then creating publishers and subscribers so we can get a handle on what it does and kind of how it works. And we'll look at some more advanced use cases in future videos. So when we talk about Azure Service Bus, there's really two ways to send messages, and that's with queues and topics. And the most fundamental one is queues. It's pretty straightforward. We have a queue, and if we want to send a message between uh, a publisher and a subscriber, we use the queue. So a publisher, sometimes called a sender, is going to have one message that's going to create, and on the other end of that queue is going to be a subscriber. The publisher will originate the message and then will put it onto the queue. Now the subscriber may or may not be there at the time that message is being sent. So this allows the publisher to send up as many messages as the queue can hold until the subscriber connects to that queue and then starts moving those messages off the queue and processing them. This is an asynchronous message pattern, meaning that it allows the publisher to send something to the subscriber without the subscriber actually being there to receive it. With HTTP, we do that in a more synchronous mode where we expect a response back from a client that's requesting something across the wire. With the queue, we don't necessarily expect something right away at the time of sending. You can send messages back to another queue and then have the publisher also be a subscriber and the subscriber be a publisher and you can get two-way communication that way. And you can use correlation IDs to correlate messages. But fundamentally, this is how it works where a publisher sends something to a queue, it waits on the queue until the subscriber can next and then processes that message. So service bus topics are a lot like queues. The, basically the major difference is it's one to many. So we're going to have a topic and a publisher and the topic works a lot like the queue does where the publisher can publish to the topic, but instead of having essentially just one listener or one-to-one -one, uh, correspondence between a message that's sent to the queue and then read from the queue, we can have multiple subscriptions to a topic. So that basically means that every subscription will get their own copy of the message from the publisher. And then each subscription can have their own subscriber. So what happens then in this case is the publisher will create a message, put it onto the topic, and then the topic will create a copy for each subscription. And then once the subscription has the message, each subscriber can then receive the message independent of other subscribers against their own subscription. So it's very straightforward. It's just basically multiplying the message against multiple receivers with a single sender. So I'm here in the Azure portal. This is my service bus that I've set up. It's a service bus namespace, and I have attached to it a queue and a topic. And my queue is the one I want to look at first. And this is a very straightforward example here. So I just created a queue by clicking create a queue. And you can do this programmatically too. You don't have to do it in the portal, but you give it a name and it's got a lot of different options here. Like it enabled duplication detection, which is nice. And you can enable sessions, enable partition. You can do a lot of different things, which will uh, get to in more in-depth videos at a future date. But for simplicity, we're just going to set a name and call it my queue. And I basically just took the defaults in this. And for many cases, that's probably good enough for some things. But uh, for my case, I'm just going to leave it like that. I currently have five messages on this queue because when I was uh, writing the apps, I was writing some messages to this just to make sure that everything was working. And to test this, I'm basically just going to create a publisher and a subscriber. And this is going to be the queue that the publisher and subscriber are going to be publishing and subscribing to. Now to connect to a service bus, I'm going to need a connection string. To get that, I'm just going to come over here to the policy and then click on root management shared access key and then click on uh, primary connection string and I'm going to grab that. And then I'm going to use that inside of my application. Now to do this, I'm going to be using a publisher and a subscriber application. So my publisher is this one right here. And I'm going to open this up. I wrote this in Node.js, which I tend to use for a lot of things. Uh, but in any case, this is pretty straightforward. This the particular app uses the connection string right here, and then it's using a connection queue right there. And then it configures that just using the SDK from Azure. And I 
create a service bus client and I create a sender. And then this just creates a for loop that will go 10,000 times where it'll start sending a message on a, basically one every half a second. So it will send a message and then wait half a second and send the next one. It's basically just populating the body with the message ID, which is the integer of the for loop. So very straightforward here, but nothing fancy going on. The receiver for this is pretty straightforward as well, but let's go ahead and start this up. So I'm gonna go to node and I'm gonna start sending messages to the queue. So that's sending messages to the queue now. It's basically just writing one every half a second. So let's come back over here to our code and let's look at the subscriber for this or the receiver. And this is pretty much the same setup where I have a connection string, I have a queue name, and this one is setting up a receiver using the queue name and it has a handler for whenever it gets a new message. And then it reads the message and basically just writes it back to the console. So nothing fancy going on there, but because that's already queued up a bunch of messages and there's a bunch of messages in the queue already, it's just going to read everything in the queue at first until it catches up. And then it's just going to basically be reading messages as they're sent. So I should have a queue full of messages because the uh, actual uh, publisher has been running for a few seconds now. So let's go ahead and run this and it's just going to receive a bunch of messages and let's wait till more to catch up. And that should happen pretty quickly. Let's see right here on the publisher. It's, uh, it's catching up to this batch and we are almost there. And there it is, now we're caught up. So basically it caught up to the the publisher and as this one sends, this one receives, this one sends, this one receives, that's because they're both connected simultaneously to the queue. So if I was to kill this one right here, this one should stop receiving messages. And the second I start sending messages again, it's going to start receiving messages again. So that's how queues work. It's very straightforward, not much to it. Now let's take a look at our topics and this one has a single topic uh, with it and I have three subscriptions on this one. So if you come over here and look at subscriptions, you'll see I have a three subscriptions right here and I can simply add another subscription and it's got some of the same kind of options that we would expect from a queue, but this one allows me to have the auto delete after so many days, etc., just to keep the queue or the subscription cleaned up and so on. This one is pretty straightforward. This is where I'm going to be publishing to. So I'm going to publish once and publish to then three different subscriptions that are going to consume that. So it's one to three in this relationship that we have set up here. So let's take a look at my demo for topics here. Now I have a publisher and subscriber uh, for each one of the sides that I'm going to be working with on the topic. The publisher is pretty much the same code that I saw with Q. I just changed w the variable name and instead of calling it a Q name, I called it topic name, but otherwise this code is identical. And this is done this way because Microsoft allows me to use the same client library, whether I'm using queues or topics, it will work with either one. Now the subscriber code is a little bit different, but let's go ahead and start this up so that we can get it running. And I'm just going to run node index.js and that's just going to start publishing some messages up to that topic. Now, the code for the subscriber is a little bit different in that I need to have both a topic and a, subs a subscription named for this particular uh, application to run. So I get the, the, the topic name is just a variable that's hard coded in the code as well as a connection string. But rather than have three instances of this running, I'm basically just going to prompt myself to enter the name of the subscription, and then it's going to connect using the name I entered and then the topic name right here. And then that's going to connect the client to the particular topic and subscription to that topic. So let's go ahead and start this one up. I'm going to create three instances of it since I had three subscriptions on my topic. And I named them sub one, sub two, and sub three. So let's call this one node index and just type in sub one. And I could have made that a command line parameter or something like that. I just decided to prompt for it in this case. In any case, that's just running down and catching up to wherever my publisher was. And let's go ahead and start the other two instances of this, basically doing the same thing. This is going to be node index.js and sub two. And it's catching up. And let's go ahead and start this one right here and node I can type in node, that'd be helpful. And, and I'm gonna call it sub three. 
and that's going to start catching up now. Now, let's see if we can get these kind of all on the same screen here. Here's all of my uh, subscribers. Uh, there's one, there's two, and this should be my third one right here that is pumping out, that's reading a bunch of messages off of that particular subscription. And they're all kind of caught up in the same um, area. So 209, 210, 211, they're all right there. Now let's get my publisher up, which would be this window right here. So you can kind of see that they're all uh, getting the messages that my publisher is sending. So this is sending it up to the topic. It's getting multiplied among these various receivers over here that I have running. So if I was to stop sending messages, we would expect this one to stop uh, receiving messages over here, all three subscriptions. So let's start them, uh, start sending messages again, and we should start seeing messages come back through. So again, very much like we saw with queues, the main difference is I have a one-to-many relationship rather than a one-to-one -one relationship. So that's the main difference between the two. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you. Thank you.